Crash by Jerry Spinelli, chapters 21 and 22, read for you by Mrs. Shoemaker. Chapter 21. Scooter, she repeated his name a third time, don't you think our grass is too short? Scooter just stared at her. What kind of dumb question is that? I said. Scooter, she whined, isn't it? If you say it's too short, he said, it's too short. And how would you like to look out the back window and see a rabbit, or maybe even a raccoon? Scooter nodded. Well, that would be nice. She crouched on her knees, leaned into him, and out it came. Well, here's what I did. See, I found out at school there's these things called wildlife habitats. You can have one in your own backyard as long as it's big enough. She bounced on her knees. Bed springs creaked. And ours is. I rode away to Washington, D.C., and I found out all you need to do. Like, you have to have water and food and cover. That means tall grass and weeds and wood piles and stuff and nesting places. And then when you do all that, you draw it up in a plan and send it in. And if it's good enough, they send you a certificate and you have an official backyard wildlife habitat. She stopped to take a breath. And then, said Scooter, the animals move in. Abby yipped, right, animals and birds, and we give them a place to be. We save them. Go Scooter grinned. From the shopping centers? Exactly. She reached out and stroked my arm. And my nice, sweet, wonderful, lovable big brother is going to build me an observation post in the cherry tree so I can observe the wildlife. I pulled my arm away and laughed. Dream on. Scooter thought for a while, then nodded. I like it, but it's not my backyard. Meaning, of course, it's my parents. I was thinking of my father, who cuts the grass and edges it and weed wax it and has the chemlon truck spray it, and my mother, who used to throw fits because I dug holes and buried her flowers. And that's not counting my own opinion. I think it sucks, I said. I'll take a maul over a stupid raccoon any day. Abby pressed her palms together like a prayer. Scooter Pop Pop, you say something to them. Tell them what a great idea it is, okay? She lifted her praying hands to his nose. Please. You keep planning it, he said. We'll see. She squealed and hugged him. He glanced over her shoulder at the clock, and I knew he was ready to kick us out. I didn't want to leave yet. I had to come up with something fast, a question. And there it was, right in front of me, where it must have been all my life. Why is your name Scooter? I said. I was hoping there would be a half-hour story behind it, but all he said was, Oh, I was a speedy little bugger when I, where I grew up. One time somebody said, Look at him, Scoot. And that was that. He turned on the lamp. Okay, Swabby's bedtime. Abby kissed him. I shook hands. I turned at the door. Did you ever run in the pen relays? He frowned. What is that? Oh, nothing. Good night. Batten the hatch on your way out, mateys. Chapter 22. October 22nd. My grandfather came to two practices this week. Not Webb. Not anybody else can say that. The other two, two days, he was with Abby after school. And of course today, he was at our game with Donner. They were a lot better than Hillside East. They beat us 27-19. to 19. I figured it served the coach right for making me sit out the first quarter. Once I got in, I scored all three of our TDs. After each one, I pointed to Scooter in the stands, and I said to myself, Take that, Webbs. Actually... I was kind of surprised that Webb showed up for his cheerleading duties today. This morning, as Mike and I were heading for home room, we came on a whole mob of kids laughing and whistling in the hallway. We nosed our way in. 
The target was somebody's locker, and you don't have to be a genius to figure out who. Taped onto the door was a sign saying, Sissy Boom Ba, and hanging from the clamp of the padlock was a lacy black bra. Mike laughed. <laughs> Looks like the whole school's taking over our job for us. I didn't really care. My mind wasn't on Webb today. It wasn't even totally on the game for, with Donner. What it was on was the school dance tonight. And Jane Forbes. I hoped she would be there. And she was. We've been in school over a month now, and she hasn't said two words to me. When I ask her a question, she nods or grunts or pretends she doesn't hear. When I wave and say hi in the hallway, she walks by with her nose in the air. And every time she does it, I get a little madder, and I like her a little more. Is that crazy or what? I walked to the dance with Mike. He kept smirking at me. You love her. Yeah, right, I said. If you spell love, H-A-T-E. You love her. If she was a guy, I would have clubbed her a long time ago. His smirk doubles, and he gets into my face and says, almost in a whisper, but she ain't a guy. I cruised the sidelines of the dance floor with DeLuca and Brill and some other footballers. I knew I was looking good. I wore my new shirt for the first time. My mother had taken the price tag off, but I saw a shirt just like it at the mall. It's worth about ten pan pizzas. Speaking of looks, the girls. It was funny. I mean, we had just seen them a couple of hours before. But now the cafeteria was a dance floor, and they weren't girl students anymore. They were girl girls. Pure chicks. Jane Forbes was something else. She was like another species. She left the other girls so far behind. She came in with some friends she had made since school started. She was dressed pretty much the same as at school, which didn't surprise me. She's not the fancy type. She was too far away, and the lights were too dim for me to see her face good. But I knew there wouldn't be much makeup. Her hair seemed a little different. Mike poked me. There she is. I pretended to look around. Who? Who do you think? I couldn't stand that grin of his. Just to show him, I turned, reached out, and without really looking, tapped the nearest female and said, You want to dance? Mistake. I was looking down into the face that hardly came up to my armpit. She had a big white floppy bow in her hair. She was surrounded by three other tiny tots, all with big floppy bows. She had to be in sixth grade, but she had the body of a third grader in the face of a drunken grandmother. She had on enough makeup for ten clowns. She must have put it on in the dark after her mother dropped her off. A splotch of rouge was so thick on one cheek, it looked like a third eye. And her lipstick was smeared so bad it looked like she had four lips. The three eyes gawked up at me like I was something in the zoo. Both mouths opened and said, Huh? Behind me, the guys were squeaking with held in laughter. Somebody was nudging me closer to the girl. I was getting mad at them. At the girl. Never mind, I said. But at the same time, and louder, Mike butted in. He said, do you want to dance? I cranked up a grin while I rammed my elbow back into my best friend's chest. Meanwhile, the girl's friends were squealing and pressing into her. One of them said, Don, he wants to dance. He wants you to dance with him. Another one whispered, Are you gonna? They were all looking from her to me, me to her. Two of Dawn's, Dawn's eyes kept blinking at me. Then her mouth opened again, and it let go its second syllable of the night. No. Half the football team erupted. Before I could say something, the tots toddled off. I turned. I put out both hands and shoved. Mike went back into Brill. Brill went back into three others. And then they were all lurching and howling backward into the lunch counter. I headed straight across the floor. Maybe I didn't know what I was going to do. But now I did.